Island. That's the message delivered over the weekend during Vito Fasella's State of the Borough speech. The borough president touted major investments in housing, health care, and retail expansion. And he's joining us this morning to talk about all of that. So, good morning, borough president. Thanks for being with us this morning. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate yes. it. So, before we dive into everything into your State of the Borough speech, we did want to talk to you about the incident that happened last night at a smoke shop on. Highland Boulevard. Uh, we have seen an increase in smoke shop robberies all across Manhattan. Can you tell us any the latest on what happened last night? And are you seeing the same trend of more of these smoke shops opening up on Staten Island? Yeah, there is a trend on on the opening, and um, you know, like uh, we always say, one crime is one crime too many. So, probably it's just going to be under investigation as to what the cause is, who did it. Uh, we are very, very sensitive to any uptick in, in crime on Staten Island. Typically, we are the if we were a separate city, we'd be the, among the safest, if not the safest, big city in America. So all the anything like this that happens, um, we are on top of it. Unfortunately, we have the great uh, men and women in the New York City Police Department. I'm sure do will do a thorough investigation to identify who did this, and to ensure or try to ensure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Okay. Well, crime in general has been a rise in crime across the South Shore. Staten Island District Attorney Michael McMahon, he's uh, addressing that during a community board meeting tomorrow night. Public safety was one of the points you discussed during your State of the Borough address. So what are the biggest problems facing Staten Island right now? Well, well, two things. Public safety, we're still dealing with the, I think, the residual real effects of uh, bail reform at, at, in the state legislature. I think when, when individuals can just get away with doing bad things on a regular basis without accountability or consequences, they are going to continue to do so. So that still needs to be addressed. Um, on Staten Island, we have a, an uptick, frankly, of, of auto thefts, in part because of uh, the, the lack of inability to get these folks who, once they cross the bridge into New Jersey, for example, or mm -hmm. cross the county into Nassau, um, the NYPD uh, can only do so much. The good news, because we've been coordinating very closely with the district attorney, uh, is that we've been a, given a commitment that the New York City Police Department will form a, a task force and that it will begin to partner with other regional forces, including federal forces as well. And that is significant because now we're going to have a comprehensive approach to once we identify where these individuals are, where the cars end up, we can begin to reduce and uh, minimize the amount of stolen cars that, that have happened. Yeah, let's hope that that works. Uh, another quality life, uh, quality of life issue, though, involves lithium ion battery storage facilities that developers want to build on Staten Island. Now, these e-bikes are everywhere. We're hearing about more and more of these fires because of them. These batteries, I mean, they're everywhere. So you're totally against these storage facilities, though, on Staten Island. Tell us why, uh, why you why you don't want them, and what you think maybe the alternative could be. Well, we've, what I've said, what many believe, uh, is that we should have a moratorium on these for placement of these lithium batteries uh, until I think the community has been given an update as to what, what they're all about, mm -hmm. safety issues. Uh, and just as important, they're putting them right in the middle of some residential commercial districts. You, you may have a hair salon, you may have an ice cream parlor, uh, you name it. And then along come these big white uh, storage batteries. And recently there was one in the, the Bulls Head section of Staten Island that was placed in the parking lot of a church, again in a residential community in the backyard practically of two different schools. And we thought that was inappropriate. Fortunately, the company withdrew that application. But we, I think the people of Staten Island owe it as to what these things are all about. So that's why I call for a moratorium until, and, uh, until that explanation is given in an adequate way. We're not even getting into the technical side, as you mentioned, the the fires. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have we don't have the ability to speak intelligently, if you will, on that because nothing really has been presented to us. So until and unless uh, enough information is given, I think the appropriate thing to do is to have a moratorium and then give the people transparency and a full full disclosure as to what what these things are all about. You know, transparency, full disclosure on that same point. I just want to stay on this for a minute. Uh, the folks in Bull's Head actually had no idea this was happening. Uh, this right. was actually kind of a surprise when they found out, right? Is that what's going on in other communities? Uh, for the most part, yes. Yeah. So there's two different ways these, uh, these, these, things, these things are occurring. One is so-called as of right. 
the zoning allows it, which I think is in a, which I think is wrong, because as I mentioned, you go in these commercial areas or residential communities, and they're saying we could do this as of right. The one in Bull's Head was was requiring additional, in, uh, like a variance, if you will, and they would have to get approval. So. Uh, the community was really left in the dark. Uh, even members of that particular parish were, felt that they were left out, not to mention the schools around this, uh, this, this area. So they withdrew it. And I, I just think that people, something like this, you know, you, you can't just drop these things on people and say, take it, you know, yeah. take it or leave it. You, you have to give, you have to educate them a little bit to tell them why they're doing it and to ensure it's safe and it's going to do harm or bring harm to a community that it shouldn't be done. It's a very simple proposition, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I mean, bottom line, you got to make sure that it's safe to have something like right. that yeah. in any neighborhood, 100%. right? Uh, so it's been a month since the Sandy Ground Ferry caught fire with the passengers on board. You actually had the chance to see the aftermath uh, firsthand and speak to some of the DOT officials about that investigation. Which is still underway. Is there a cause for concern, though, for you that that this could happen again? Well, first off, the Staten Island Ferry is the lifeline uh, for tens of thousands of people in Staten Island on a daily basis. Uh, it's iconic, yes, uh, in, uh, throughout the world. But for us, it's it's people getting to work and getting to work safely, reliably, every single day, and, and getting home. So we always. Uh, have a special eye on the Staten Island Ferry. And by and large, the, the people are professional. Uh, the, the borough commissioner and, and others are very, very uh, adhered to a long protocols of safety. In this case, uh, you're right, I did visit the, uh, the ferry last week, actually saw the, uh, the, the engine room where the fire occurred, and, and it wasn't pretty. Uh, with that said, the OT, as well as the Coast Guard, which is leading the investigation, <laughs> feel that the other ferry that's currently in service, the, the Aulis ferry, uh, is is okay and, and safe. So therefore, they've ruled out sort of a manufacturing or design mm -hmm. uh, effect for this fire. So we feel pretty comfortable that the other is okay. But with all that said, you can never, you always have to be vigilant. And the crew itself was is very uh, trained on a regular basis. Uh, fortunately, that night when things could have gone in a bad direction, with no injury, no major injuries to speak of, the evacuation w was was safe, and uh, I give them a lot of credit for doing that. But this is what we do. We need to keep an eye on this every single day. Yeah. All right, Staten Island Borough President Vito Fasella, we really thank you for joining us this morning, sir. Thanks so much for having. Me. Appreciate it.